Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's Threat Snapshot. Today we're going to be discussing a remote code execution vulnerability found in PaperCut. PaperCut, for those of you who don't know, is a print management software. Um, it's used commonly by you know local and state governments, education, academia, small businesses, and as you know, printer management software it has some you know very interesting features to be able to um, you know automatically update different you know print software drivers, other components and things. So uh, back in January of this year, Trend Micro reported privately to PaperCut that there were some vulnerabilities in their software, um, including the uh, remote code execution vulnerability that we're going to discuss today, and that they had seen evidence of these actively being exploited in the wild. So the, the private disclosure process, you know, it does work, folks. Um, PaperCut was able to uh, identify the vulnerability, find and push a release um, that was pushed out back in March. Um, and then we have public disclosure of the vulnerabilities now in April. So that gives plenty of time for customers to apply the patches, um, hopefully before more public exploits are in the wild like we're seeing and like we're going to demo today. So um, yeah, just wanted to talk through a little bit more about PaperCut. Uh, there's some really good threat intelligence out there um, if you want to follow along. Uh, Horizon 3 did a really good blog post um, really identifying kind of how you would locate the vulnerability and how you would go about exploiting it. Um, so there's really two parts to this. Um, the one is an authentication bypass. Um, so as part of the um, setup complete process, you can see here, um, basically when you um, do the setup and you go to that URL and the application thinks setup is complete, it's going to automatically log the user into the software. So you can see by navigating to that process and clicking login that we have bypassed authentication. So that is the, the main piece of getting into the console. Um, once you're in the console, um, they have the ability to, again, create uh, arbitrary scripts. And again, these are going to be basically any sort of Java snippet that you want to run. You can see here that Java lang runtime, git runtime exec is being called. And, you know, anytime software has a, you know, very open scripting interface that customers can use, uh, it definitely falls victim to, you know, attacks like this. Um, doesn't help that uh, on Windows environments, print cut runs as a service, and that is going to be running as um, into authority system. So you're going to have elevated privileges if you have access to this. Um, this management software, again, oftentimes is, um, you get internet facing, it is a web-based application. So, um, you know, it's some of the research that Horizon 3 and also in the Huntress blog post have shown is that, uh, you know, there is definitely uh, paper cut uh, logins on the internet. And uh, again, these could very easily be exploited and vulnerable systems and, um, you know, those are going to give you very elevated access on that system because it is running as a service account. So you can see at the time of this blog post, there were about 1800 results here um, from that scan. So why don't we um, pivot over to Snap Attack? Let's talk about paper cuts some more. Um, we have some threat intelligence here. So again, our Horizon 3 blog post and our Huntress blog posts, again, with the, you know, linked threats, linked detections and IOCs too, if they're available which again, you can use our IOC Hunter to quickly search and see if there's any of those in your network. As for PaperCut itself, um, we were able to replicate the threat using the um, open source vulnerability you know, put out by Horizon 3, and there's some others available at this time. Um, so this is going to be running on Linux. It is a you know Python script, and then we also do have a Windows host here that is running PaperCut. Uh, PaperCut being Java-based is cross-platform. Um, this vulnerability does affect Mac OS and Linux servers too. Um, obviously, the POC might be a little different. So instead of spawning, you know, CMDs and PowerShells, you're going to be spawning, you know, Bash and, you know, BinSH and other things of that nature. But um, main exploit paths are still the same. So um, we can take a look over here. I'm going to pivot over to the Linux host and we'll just, you know, watch what we have to do here. So We've got that, um, you know, proof of concept. We have to give it the IP address and the port of the host name, and then we have the command that we want to run. So, um, 
Again, we're going to use some living off the land techniques here. So we are going to use PowerShell. Um, this is doing an invoke web request to download a Meterpreter uh, exe to the system. Um, and then this is going to launch another command to actually start that Meterpreter exe. So you can see CMD, see the Meterpreter. And if we pivot over to Metasploit, where we have our handler running, we can see that um, Meterpreter connected back. It is running as system, so we don't have to do anything special to elevate privileges. Um, not doing anything else particularly interesting on the host. We don't need to pop calcs or anything. We've proven we have code execution here. Um, lots of different detections for this. This is a very noisy threat, and we can see a lot of that as evidenced on the process graph. So like we said, PaperCut is going to be running as a system service. This is going to be um, seen as PC dot app, or PC app uh, with a hyphen on uh, Windows. And, um, you know, that whole parent-child process, um, you know, those suspicious, you know, parent-child process paths are definitely very easy to detect. So, you know, seeing PowerShell.exe spawning, seeing CMDs and seeing other things from there. Um, those kind of generic evergreen detections, you know, really work uh, very well here and also, um, you know, can really help kind of identify, you know, malicious use of this. Um, there could obviously be false positives where if you're using that scripting interface to, say, use PowerShell to install a driver or something for printers across your network and enterprise, I mean, that is the intended functionality of why there is a script interface here, but uh, you could easily see how this sort of uh, behavior would be abused. So how would I detect this? How would I hunt for this in my network? Um, particularly if you have an EDR, there's a, a couple of different ways you can look at this. So one is obviously going to be looking for suspicious child processes of the uh, paper cut or PC app.exe. So looking for any of those common utilities that are used here. So we can see a couple of our hits in snap attack where, you know, it's hitting on PowerShell and it's hitting on cmd.exe. So that's definitely a good detection. Another one that may be overlooked is um, file creation events. So a part of what we wanted to demo here by dropping that meterpreter shell or that meterpreter binary um, to the system and then executing that um, if an attacker is, say, deploying ransomware or have some other kind of, you know, stage two for command and control that they're not doing, you know, completely in memory, um, you're going to see something dropping to, um, to disk. So there are different ways that you can look for that. And typically, again, that is going to be launched by default in the paper cut server. So um, when you download the file, that's going to be location. Um, keeping in mind that this is a system process, so if they did want to drop it to, you know, C dot, like, you know, um, basically a C directory or system 32 or some other place, they could do that. But by default, this is a location where these files could be found. So that's a little bit more about paper cut and how we can help you stay ahead of threats like this. Um, this is our threat snapshot weekly series. So like, subscribe, comment below the video, and we'll see you next week.